You have all your Christmas money, you bought some games during the Steam Winter Sale, and you saved up enough for your Steam Deck. Now you're ready to get some accessories. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm going to help you build a starter kit and tell you about the essentials as well as some more novel accessories that you may not have thought of. I'll also tell you what you should buy now and what you should wait for, maybe until the Steam Deck is released. Well, what am I waiting for? Let's get into it. What's good deck gang? The beauty of the Steam Deck lies in its versatility. Some of you are going to play on the go, some of you may dock to your TV. A lot of my gaming time is in bed, so not all of these accessories will apply to everyone. But if they apply to you, I'm going to let you know if you can buy it now, or if it would be better to wait until the Steam Deck is actually out and maybe in your hands. I'll address Linux compatibility where applicable. I bought a few things myself and have tested them out using Manjaro Linux, which Valve has indicated is the closest analog to Steam OS 3. So I have a good handle on hardware compatibility so far. Finally, I'm going to give you a few staples, but also I hope to give you some ideas that you hadn't thought of. I'll include links to everything I'm discussing in the description. One short disclaimer is that any Amazon links will be affiliate links. I bought all of these products on my own and my opinion is my own but your purchases using my affiliate links do help my channel out a ton. If you're planning on buying from Amazon, consider using my link to help support this channel. The first item is one that's gonna apply to absolutely everyone. You probably already have at least one. I'm talking about a micro SD card. Since you may already have one, I'll keep this short. You're absolutely safe to buy this now and you shouldn't have a problem with compatibility. There are a lot of good options, but definitely stick to a reputable brand like Samsung, SanDisk, or Lexar. I typically recommend 512 gigabytes. I have a tough time recommending a one terabyte micro SD card because you can usually buy two 512s for a good deal less than one terabyte. On the subject of speed, U3 is a good deal faster than U1. You can go down to U1 to save a little money. However, if I'm low on funds, I'd prefer to stick to a faster speed and sacrifice storage, especially on my primary card. Of course, your mileage will vary. One last note on speed. Some people have corrected me in my comments to say that A2 is in fact faster than A1 for playing games. I honestly still haven't seen any data to back that up, but I'm willing to concede that I may be wrong here. Aside from speed and storage, let me drop a note here about compatibility. Of course, micro SD cards work great on Linux and Steam Deck itself is able to format the SD card to the right file system for you. If you're looking to prep the card ahead of time, you want to use the ext4 file system. There are lots of ways you may want to prepare an SD card. Maybe you want to boot into another OS like Windows or Batocera, or maybe you want to load up your ROMs and Linux based emulators. Or perhaps you want to install Steam games straight to your card. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make an SD card prep guide, be it for emulation or anything else. Before I move on from micro SD cards, I've mentioned this a few times, but this card holder is really nice. It's the size of a couple of credit cards stacked on top of each other, and it should fit well in the pocket of the Steam Deck carrying case. It holds 10 micro SD cards, which might be overkill, but the more I think about it, the more I think I'm going to find reasons to have multiple cards on hand, like having bootable operating systems or maintaining different game collections. Check it out. Another staple you may be considering for your Steam Deck is a screen protector. Based on everyone I've spoken to, it seems like almost half of you are considering getting a screen protector and half are not. For example, I've seen some people say that the Steam Deck is not slippery like a phone, so why would you worry about dropping it? And I've seen others say that the screen protector won't adhere to the etched glass screen very well, or that it will defeat the purpose of the anti-glare on the etched glass. For what it's worth, Lawrence Yang from the Steam Deck team says there's no problem whatsoever using a screen protector on the etched glass Steam Deck. I myself haven't bought one yet, but I do plan on it. I have two kids at home, and I mean, I've certainly dropped electronics in the past. I'm absolutely in the better safe than sorry camp. As for whether or not it's safe to buy one ahead of time, I'd absolutely say yes. If you're not in the Q1 camp, however, I think it would make sense to wait until we start seeing reviews. If you search for Steam Deck screen protector on Amazon, you'll see plenty of options. Some are from brands you've heard of and some are not. And it'd be easier to sift through the bad ones once we have people that actually have some hands on time. As for me, I'll probably go with this one from Amfilm. I've used Amfilm in the past and they've never steered me wrong. Just like I wouldn't steer you wrong with any of my videos. If this video is helpful to you, smash the like button. And if you're as excited about the Steam Deck as I am, hit that subscribe button and slap the bell so you never miss any of my Steam Deck videos. Next is something you may not have thought of, a carrying case. 
Obviously, the deck conveniently comes with its own carrying case. But I don't mean for the deck itself. I mean for accessories. If you're actually taking your machine on the go, it's going to be helpful to have something to carry your earbuds, power bank, SD cards, or maybe a mini keyboard or dock. Pro tip, you probably have something around the house that fits the bill. I have an old Vita case I may use, or maybe my Switch carrying case. Either of these are going to be great for when I'm going on a trip and having a stay at a hotel or with family. I can bring a USB-C to HDMI cable and my mini keyboard and I'll be set wherever I go. If you're planning a trip as soon as you get your Steam Deck, there's no reason you can't buy this now, assuming you don't have one already. After all, you're just packing up some accessories and nothing about the deck itself. One of the accessories you all ask about all the time is a dock, especially because Valve themselves have been pretty quiet on the subject of their first party dock. From a strictly technical standpoint, these are absolutely safe to buy now, but there are some things to look out for. Valve has said that the DEX USB-C port has a video bandwidth capable of outputting to dual monitors at 4K 60Hz. Alternatively, you could output to a single 4K TV at 120Hz. So basically, you'd want to buy a dock that can give you the video bandwidth that you are looking for. If I look at one of the top results for a USB-C dock on Amazon, I get a nice, inexpensive option from Anker. $35 is pretty cheap and you might wonder why. Well, when you look a little closer, it's only capable of outputting a single 4K output at 30Hz. That's a quarter of the bandwidth that the Steam Deck is capable of, but it's possible that this is good enough for you. That's still capable of 1440p at 60Hz, which is likely going to be more than enough for gaming on the deck. Video bandwidth, however, is not the only thing to consider. You also want to take a look at the power pass-through. That same Anker dock says it's capable of a power pass-through of up to 85 watts. That should be more than enough for the Steam Deck, whose own charger is a 65 watt brick. The last thing to keep in mind is the video output. Some of these docks are HDMI out and some others are DisplayPort. This one I've shown is HDMI out. So overall, if you're looking for a cheap option with HDMI out and you don't need the full video bandwidth of the deck, this Anker dock does look very capable and inexpensive at $35. Now, if you want something that matches what Valve has said of their dock, the price is going to jump up pretty quickly. Let's take a look at this Technet option on Amazon. It's on sale for $140, so $100 more than the other option but it does dual monitors at 4K60, hence the two HDMI ports. It also has more ports for things like audio and more importantly, gigabit ethernet. If you want a wired connection to a dock Steam Deck, you'll want a dock that has an ethernet port. For Valve's own dock, we know it will have one HDMI port, one display port, one USB 3.1, and two USB 2.0. We also know that it will have ethernet, and I believe they said this will be gigabit. I expect this dock to be priced somewhere between the two options I've given here. And one last note about Valve's dock is that they seem to be considering the slightly awkward placement of the USB-C port on the Steam Deck, which lies on top of the deck. Based on what we've seen from hands-on demonstrations, it will likely be a stand that you can sit the deck on with an L-shaped USB-C cable to keep the cable from sticking out. So in that way, I would say it's safer to wait for the Valve dock than to buy one now. Technically speaking, there's no reason you can't buy a dock now, but the fact that Valve's dock will be tailor-made for the Steam Deck and may come at a sensible price, it just seems you're better off waiting to see how that all pans out. Next up, there are a ton of Bluetooth accessories that you already own that you are probably considering using with your Steam Deck, notably headphones and controllers. I've tested all my controllers, headphones, and headsets on Manjaro Linux and have encountered absolutely no issues. This is somewhere that PC gaming is just so much more convenient than console gaming. Very rarely can you use a competitor's control pads on a console. At least that one is somewhat understandable, but what I can't wrap my head around is that I can't use Bluetooth earbuds on my PS5. Thankfully, Nintendo enabled Bluetooth audio on the Switch, but otherwise you're out of luck. Not so on the Steam Deck. If you have a pair of Bluetooth headphones, headsets, control pads, keyboards, or mice, or anything conventional, chances are really good that it'll work with the Steam Deck out of the box. So I'd say this is typically safe to buy. If you want to test this yourself, you can create a USB drive that is bootable to Manjaro Linux. In this live environment, you can test any of your USB or Bluetooth accessories and see if you encounter any issues. I'm not going to cover that in this video, but I'll include a link to someone else's tutorial video down in the description below. On the subject of keyboards, I wanted to mention a couple of mini keyboards. If you're connecting your Steam Deck to a big screen, you may consider picking up a mini keyboard. 
Steam itself will allow you to navigate with a control pad. You'll be able to use the trackpad or analog sticks as a mouse, and you should be able to bring up an on-screen keyboard with some button combinations, so you certainly don't need any kind of physical keyboard. But if you just want one like I do, I love this Re i4 mini keyboard. It's really versatile. It's a full keyboard, so it has control, shift, tab, and windows keys. It has a full row of function keys. On top of that, it has mouse controls. There's this trackpad that also allows you to scroll, click, or right click. But it also has a scroll wheel and the shoulder buttons are used for mouse clicks. The D-pad are for arrow keys plus an OK button in the center that is just an extra return key. Finally, it has some volume and browser buttons. If I had any gripe, it would be that there are no media playback buttons. It would have been nice to have buttons to skip to the next track, go back to the previous track, or pause and play the media. I would have preferred that over the browser buttons, personally. As far as connecting this to the Steam Deck, it can do either Bluetooth or you can use the USB dongle that comes with it. I like that it had convenient storage for the dongle behind a plate that covers the battery. I also love a good typing game, like Typing in the Dead or The Textorcist. If you like something like that too, you might want a fuller keyboard experience that's still portable. I love this foldable Bluetooth keyboard from Artec. When folded, it's extremely compact and can go in a small carrying case, like I described earlier, or even just in your pocket. But when it's unfolded, it's still a pretty full keyboard layout. In addition to typing games, this is what I would use when I'm writing some code or even writing a script for these videos. It can hold up to three distinct Bluetooth connections at once and has a keyboard shortcut for easy swapping between those three. It charges via mini USB and should last something like 50 to 60 hours on a charge. I would say keyboards like this are safe to buy ahead of time. With regard to compatibility, both of these keyboards worked well in Manjaro Linux. I had no problem connecting or using these keyboards and there's no reason it wouldn't be the same on a Steam Deck. If you're planning on traveling with the Steam Deck, you may consider a power bank. You kind of have two options here. You could use a power bank designed for phones or even the Switch, but those are not going to give you a full charge. If you want a full charge, you should pick up a power bank that's designed for laptops, like this one here from Sycon. These are bulky, about the size of a small water bottle. This really only makes sense if you're not going to have a place to plug in for an extended period of time, like maybe a camping trip. Technically, these are safe to buy now, I just kind of question the need. If you are looking to buy a power bank, tell me why in the comments. If you're looking to do some DS emulation, I would argue that trackpads alone aren't what you want. You'll want some sort of stylus in order to see exactly where your input is going. This is a tough one. There are Bluetooth styluses that work well on their respective devices like the Surface Pen or the Apple Pencil, but those are targeted at specific touchscreens. So the only real option is a capacitive stylus, which traditionally are hard to use in an accurate way. But then I found this. It's a capacitive stylus where the tip is a transparent disc. This means there's a wide surface area to register the input, but you can see through it in order to actually have finer control. I tried this with some Pacross on the iPad and it works great. Even better, you don't have to worry about compatibility because there are no drivers or software to consider. You don't have to worry about battery life either. This is literally just a proxy for your finger. So this is absolutely safe to buy ahead of time. I really like the feel of it too. It has a nice soft metal texture that doesn't feel cheap despite the reasonable price tag. The one I ordered says it has a backup disc in case the main one breaks off. Aside from that, I can highly recommend this if you're looking to do some emulation of DS or play touch-based games like Pacross or Slay the Spire. There are a few reasons you might want some sort of stand for your Steam Deck. For example, if you're a road warrior and want to challenge someone in a first to five of Street Fighter. This is one accessory, however, where I would absolutely recommend waiting. I have this tablet stand here that I really like and expect to work well enough. It has a wide groove to hold a device and can articulate in different ways for different angles. But generally speaking, a lot of these stands are built for tablets or the Switch, which are a fraction of the depth of the Steam Deck. I expect that we are going to get a lot more options for Steam Deck stands once the Steam Deck is actually available, so I would recommend holding off. I've seen a few people ask about a portable monitor. Again, this is helpful for a road warrior sort of scenario. Maybe you're taking it with you for gaming meetups or something like that. I don't really have a reason for one myself, but there are plenty of options including touchscreen ones that would work for you. Typically these will have no issues with Linux, but I would recommend Googling before buying. For popular models, you usually find results like this one on Pharonix about the Asus Zen screen. If you're still worried about compatibility, you can once again test a specific device using Manjaro Linux. 
Generally speaking, it's safe to buy something like this ahead of time, but outside of some very specific use cases, I have a tough time seeing why you may want one. And the last accessory I'll talk about is a hardware upscaler of some sort. For example, this M cable is really popular. It's designed to upscale from something like Switch to a 4K output. That's a use case that seems like a good fit for the deck, but I would say you're better off waiting. First of all, stuff like this isn't cheap. The M cable is one of the more affordable options, and even that is $130. You know how many Steam games you can buy for $130? Second, this is a very your mileage may vary kind of item. Some games result in literally no change, and some others may only have a small, barely visible result. Finally, Steam Deck should be able to apply AMD's FSR to any game, and honestly, that may be just as good. So I'd recommend waiting until people have a Steam Deck and are able to review the best upscaling techniques. So let me summarize what I've covered here. I had six accessories or categories of accessories that are safe to buy now. Micro SD cards, micro SD card holder, a carrying case to carry your accessories, conventional Bluetooth or even USB accessories like headphones and controllers, mini keyboards, and a capacitive stylus. Each of those are safe to buy now and easy to test if you have a laptop or a PC. Then I have two more that are safe to buy now, but I kind of question the need. That's a portable monitor and a power bank. If you really want one of these, let me know in the comments below how you're going to use them. Lastly, I have four items that might be useful, but you're better off waiting. First is the screen protector. This one can go either way. If you're in the Q1 bucket and set on getting a screen protector, you can pick one up from a reputable brand and you'll likely have no issues. But if you can wait even a little bit for some user reviews, that seems like an even better bet. The next item I'd wait on is the dock. You can get some pretty good options now, but why not wait to see what Valve has to offer? Then there's the Steam Deck stand. I imagine a lot more options will become available in the next few months, and it's probably unlikely that you're going to need one so soon, so I say just wait. And finally is some sort of hardware upscaler. I say wait and see for a few reasons, but overall it's pricey and might not improve your experience very much. So is there anything you're interested in that I missed? If so, be sure to leave a comment. And if you like the work I'm doing, consider being a patron. The ad money for gaming and tech is relatively low, partially because we love our ad blockers. But I love making gaming videos. So yeah, if you want to support my channel, head over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash fandadeck. And if you made it this far, you are a real one. And you may have heard this before. Like and subscribe. Slap the bell to get notified. Tell a friend it's a vibe. That gang out. Goodbye.